I'm going to show how to cut off corners of this block, like oblique plane to cut off, and move coordinate systems around a little bit. Uh, so this is how you would, I think one of the homework problems was you had to cut off uh, two or four corners. Uh, so we're going to do that. So what we do is uh, you have to create a new plane, basically, an oblique plane in this corner. Uh, and how we do that is the datum plane command allows us to create new planes. Now, the simplest way to create a new plane is to choose a datum plane that's already existing, highlight it, click on it, and it creates a plane. Typically, that plane starts right on the other plane. And if you click on the blue arrowhead here, you can project it along this vector, anywhere along the vector. If you put something on this plane, let me just make a circle. And say I just made a disk outside here somewhere. And I uh, will just say none. None means it just creates it, doesn't unite it. Now, that disk is on this plane here. If I were to go back, double click on that plane and move the plane, that's the parent. The disk is the uh, is the child. So if I move the plane, you know, the you, mother moves, the ch child moves with her. You can also create a datum plane uh, from a face, any existing face. Again, usually it starts at zero, if this is zero to begin with. And you can click and drag it and put it where you want. Although there's no reason to put a circle out on this datum plane. Uh, in order to cut a hole through this face, you could just put the sketch on that face. But sometimes you want a plane a long ways away and be able to zoom in on it. So you could do that. Let me back this up, clean up the screen a little bit. Okay, to create a datum plane on a on a uh, on an oblique plane here, you go to datum plane, and there's lots of different types of planes you can create. At an angle, define it by two lines, uh, tangent to the surface. Uh, you can pick a YZ plane there. It's automatically YZ plane, an XZ or a XY. Um, so you have lots of options. The inferred option is always one that is like a smart option. It can do any of these planes depending on what information you give it. So we'll typically just use inferred for a lot of commands. I'm going to infer a plane by picking a midpoint. Notice I'm highlighting the edge, the line, not a plane. If I click on a plane, that's going to be a whole different information for it. So I want the midpoint on that edge. And if that's where I want the plane, exactly where I want it, I'm done right now. If I want to create a plane by two points, I pick a second point. The midpoint there and this says oh the program's thinking you want a plane perpendicular to a line defined by two points if that's the kind of plane you want then you're done but if you want a plane by three points you give it any three points and it puts a plane between them now this plane can be stretched and moved but it's always in the same spot and the plane is always infinite notice the vector here is pointing in the positive direction of the face when I end this, uh, when I click on that plane, it's going to rotate the part around backwards. But you'll see that. So I say, OK. It creates it. Let me go back to home position. This is your home position if you have the isometric uh, command on. That's isometric. I think I had it on trimetric view. I like to always model in three dimensions. Uh, I do not use uh, these dimension, these uh, views. Uh, when I'm extrude, extruding, because I can't tell which way I'm going, if I'm coming at me or away from me. So typically, you only use a two-dimensional view like this when you uh, when you want to sketch on a certain plane. But usually, it's best to always keep it in 3D mode. So I have a plane, an oblique plane defined. Let's go to extrude. Put the cursor on the edge of the plane. It highlights it. You can then click on it. It rotates it perpendicular to that plane. Since the vector was pointing into the box, it rotates it so the vector is pointing toward us. 
that really doesn't help. I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to rotate it back around. But no matter how you rotate it, you're always on the plane. The plane that you've created and touched on uh, to extrude on. So I'm going to use my profile command here to click on that midpoint. This midpoint. Notice the little the little uh, text there says edge of block one. Okay. And then back to the end point of this one. I'm done there. Your control, your uh, your mouse button to the roller ball is a button and a roller ball. If you click on that, that's a cancel command. Or you can hit escape on your keyboard. I usually hit escape on the keyboard because you try to hit the, the mouse button too, and sometimes it rolls and you end up zooming in and out instead. Okay, so this does not need any dimensions because I've actually constrained the endpoints to the midpoints and, and, and endpoint of the block. So I finish it. And then automatically, when I'm in the extrude command and doing a sketch, when I get out of the sketch, it automatically goes to extrude. Notice it's pointing inward. Let's start this at zero. And I'm going to reverse the direction. Your tab might not be on in yours, so open it up. Reverse the direction. You have to go far enough to get to climb that mountain there. And then subtract. Let's say I forgot to subtract. You've probably already done this before. And you go, okay, let's subtract that. Boom. Oop, I forgot to subtract. How do I fix this? Well, you right-click on the feature. You go to Edit Parameter, and you can change the Boolean operation. And then say, select the body you want to subtract from, if it asks for that. Anytime it gives you the red asterisk here, that's information it needs in the dialog box. The other way is, if we had this this way, we could say, let's go to the Boolean operation up here and select the body, and then uh, I'm, not, I'm on a Unite. I don't want to be on Unite. I want to be on Subtract. So you pick the part, and then you pick the body. Oh, I did that backwards. Let's try it again. Subtract. Here's the body. This is the tool. I think of the tool and the body as a the cookie cutter versus the cookie dough. Okay, so the body is the dough and the cutter is the tool. So that's another way to do it. It just adds another command on the, in, the, in the part navigator. Okay, so that's one way to, to uh, cut that corner off. The other way is using the trim body command. The trim body command does not take a sketch, so that in itself is a plus. You still have to be able to define the plane, and I would still define it, define it by this point, this midpoint, and that endpoint. But in the trim body command, the plane itself is used as a cutting tool. It will cut along the plane, and it will delete everything on one side of the plane or the other, your choice. So I'm going to create a new plane. If I had an existing, if I had an existing plane and I created a datum plane along there, I could pick that one, but I don't have it. So new plane. You can select the body now or later. Let's select it now. And let's go to specify the plane. The plane will be again this endpoint. Make sure you click an endpoint, not a plane. Notice it's already starting to cut it off. Uh, and I will go to midpoint. And then I will go to endpoint. And it's cutting it off in the direction of that vector. So if I, re if I reverse the direction, it cuts it off going outward. I like this one better than the, other, than the first method. Uh, the drawback is, is that if I had some feature that was, that was um, connected to this block and it came around the front end, you know, some wire or some hoop or something came around the front end, when I clipped that corner off, I'm going to cut off for infinity one direction, and I might be deleting things I don't want to delete. So that's the drawback. To get the other two corners cut off, uh, there's you could either redo one of these methods, you know, two more times. But the easier way is to go to the mirror feature. Mirror feature takes a construct or a subtraction, and it will mirror it about a datum plane, some plane that you create. So we need a new plane that we're going to mirror this about. Um, my select feature will be this one and that one. 
You can also choose these uh, over in the Part Navigator. You may have to, if you're choosing them in the Part Navigator, you may, since it only lets you choose one at a time, you have to click on one, hold the control key down, and click on the other. And uh, of course, the subtract goes along with that extrude because we it took us two times to do it. Not the most efficient way. Pick everything you want, though. My new plane, again, will be an inferred plane. If I, I could either pick on, create a new plane by clicking on point one, point two, and point three. But I think if I just click on point three here alone, that starts the plane out, and that's actually the plane I want. So I just say OK. And it cuts those off. Now, if you have to cut off a small piece of the corner, and you can't just snap to a particular endpoint or midpoint, say we wanted to cut off just you know 10 millimeters on each corner, uh, or maybe 10 here, 10 there, and 20 down here, let's do that, then what you have to do is create a, a datum plane, but you have to define the points on the edges by sketch. So with the sketch, we'd go on one of the three planes, and we create two of the points, like one here and one there. And you can just draw a line across there and define it. I usually I usually actually draw a triangle because sometimes it's hard to see the lines if they're on uh, an edge. So then I would, uh, of course you should always, you should always um, constrain. We'll say this is 20. And this line here, if there is a line there, yeah. we'll call that one 10. Okay, it uh, looks like it's it's over constrained, so we don't need that. So I'll just undo that last one. So that's good, and we'll finish it. So that's defined two points of our plane. Let's define the other point. Again, you could just put a point there if you wanted and define its location. I usually just draw it so I can see after I get out of the sketch where I'm at. So this would be 10. So that should be fully constrained. Yep. Finish it. There, that defines our three points now. So we would go back to the datum plane and we could click on those three points. I'm just going to use the trim command instead of the, uh, instead of the subtract command, uh, subtract extrusion. So we'll go target body, and their new plane will be this point, that point, and this point, and reverse the direction outward, like so. And that cuts off a small corner. Now, there's another way to have a, a, a coordinate system. Uh, you go to, <clears throat> you can either double click on the coordinate system. That brings up the coordinate system without the part. But if you know where you're going with this, so many millimeters long Y, so many long Z, so many long X, and you're going to rotate it on this one, and you're going to rotate it on that one. If you move your coordinate system, the, the original parent, Everything's going to move with it, and you don't know what's going to happen. So typically, you want a new coordinate system. <clears throat> Let me put this back to home. So to get a new coordinate system, we go up to here and there. This is datum C sys. That stands for coordinate system. Click on that. You have a new coordinate system that you can put anywhere you want. If you want to rotate it at 45 degrees, 40 degrees, that's 40. Now I've got to go another 5. That's 45 degrees. If you want to move it on any axis you can, if you're going to rotate it on any axis you can, and there's your new coordinate system. So if I went to, like, extrude on this coordinate system, and I put a circle right about there, I'm going to save some time by not dimensioning it, that could be my hole. Subtract that. If I go back to the coordinate system and move it, the hole is going to move with it, okay? Because it's related to the coordinate system. 
So if you wanted to create a, uh, a donut, the classical donut shape is called a toroid, you could go to, let's do revolve, we haven't got to revolve yet. This plane, put a circle around this plane, I'll put a circle on that plane right there. And we're going to revolve that circle about a vector. What vector are we going to choose? Let's revolve that circle about... The difference between a revolve and an extrude is an extrude extrudes uh, in a, along a vector, whereas a revolve extrudes around a vector. And then I'm going to go and pick this and revolve it about one of this vector. There we go. So there's my revolve. And a revolve can be a full revolve or a partial revolve. So there's my revolve. And I can do it, and I can reuse also my sketch to be around any vector. Um, I could even choose a vector by two points and make my vector, let's see, let's revolve it about from this point to this point. There we go. Well, that didn't exactly come, turn out the way I wanted. 